Okay, everyone, I think we will uh, get started now. Um, so first, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to come to uh, to hear this conversation. Um, we're really looking forward to sharing this feedback with you, and uh, we hope you can gain a bunch from it. Um, so before we get started, let's just hear a little bit about me. So I've been in sales and marketing for about the last eight years or so, and with Tritonware for for just over three months. Um, so that might explain why you've started to see a little bit of different content coming out from Tritonware uh, recently. Um, I've uh, I've come on and, and sort of changed the direction that we're going just a little bit. Um, and I, I really hope that you're benefiting from it. And I'm glad that I'm getting a chance to actually speak directly with you today. Um, I've also conveniently been in around and on the pool deck for my entire life competitively for the last 23 years. Uh, I was a competitive swimmer during the Joanne Millar, Mark Tewksbury era. Um, I actually competed against Joanne Millar way back in the, I'm not going to age myself. Um, I also was a coach after I was done being a swimmer myself. And then my son swam for a number of years. And while he was a swimmer, I sat on the board. So I've sort of sat in all of the seats that there is to sit in when it comes to being in the competitive swimming arena. Uh, so I have a bit of experience in this, in this, uh, in this field. Um, I, in terms of Tritonware, I don't know where this has been my whole life. It's sort of my passion coming together with my profession and it's a, it's just a perfect fit for me. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about eight tips that are going to help you prepare your swimmers for the competition's foot season. Um, then we're sort of peppered into it and then a little bit further at the end we're going to talk a little bit about how Tritonware can be used to leverage the, um, be leveraged to, to get you to these tips. Uh, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A session. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping. There is a hand raiser functionality in here, but I'm not going to be paying attention to it. So if you put anything in there, um, I'm super sorry, but I won't be responding to it. Um, throughout the presentation, if you come across any questions that you'd like to ask, you can feel free to pop them into the Q&A section that you can see there in your upper left hand corner. Um, I won't be responding to any of the questions until after the presentation is complete, but I'm more than happy to have those, those questions come in while I'm going through the presentation, just so you don't forget them as we go. Um, all right, so let's dig into it. So the first tip is to get started right away. Um, and, and ideally, it's to start at the beginning of the season. This is going to give you the most possible time to analyze the data and, uh, and to actually impact changes on the swimmer. Um, it take, as we all know, it takes a long time to make improvements, uh, especially to keep them consistent for championship season. So if this process is started too late, you're, uh, you're not going to be able to benefit from, from the, the change being perfected in time. Um, you're going to need to expect to course correct as you iterate strategies and test as the data comes in. You need to be done that well ahead of going into taper for some of the uh, the more advanced competitions. So you want to make sure that you have that all settled ahead of time. Um, and also, it's important to note that when you're when you start collecting data, it's really a good idea to collect two to three months worth of data before you actually start gleaning any findings from it. Um, and then, of course, it takes time to change the behavior itself. So you're not really going to see a whole lot of progress in terms of change in the swimmer's behavior for typically about three to four months in. Um, so that just gives you a little bit of example of how long it's actually going to take before you start to see any changes. Um, so once you've started, the next step is to check data regularly. Um, having the data available from every practice is going to make it super easy to regularly check in and and affect performance changes. Um, and when you use your Tritonware live during practice, it puts the data at your fingertips in the moment. Uh, so you can provide that immediate feedback between reps and sets to really impact change. It's, it's even better if you can project those results in real time onto a large screen for swimmers to see. It will speak to their competitive nature and it's gonna make them want to see improvements on the board for every rep. Um, and then in, on the other side, not paying attention to uh, 
on deck in the moment is making sure that you get a routine set up with your swimmers to check their data regularly. As a coach, you are never going to have enough time to dig into each of the swimmers data on your own. So you need to involve the swimmers. So the way to do that would be to spend a little bit of time with each swimmer at the end of each practice to give them direction for what it is that they should be looking for in their data and then task them with coming back to you with insights for your next practice. This should be something that you set up as a homework sort of concept with your swimmers each time. Um, if you happen to be working with younger swimmers, like 10 to 13 years old, uh, it's even a good idea to involve the parents. A lot of parents really want to be involved in their swimmers practices. So if you can get the parents to help the kids look for the type of insights that you're looking for, then you can get the parents involved, make them feel like they've got a say, but keep them off the deck so that they're not actually involved in the swimmers practice. You'll help the swimmer develop the habits of looking at their data early so that when they get into the elite echelons of being a swimmer, they are more prepared and, and more skilled in looking into those data and be able to bring you better insights to make faster progression with their practice. Um, so once you're checking the data regularly, the next thing that's really important to know is really understanding and knowing all of the numbers. Um, so when we when we look at the numbers, there's there's sort of two categories. There's the the lower hanging fruit. So your stroke count, your splits, your breath counts, these types of things that you can count on your own without using technology, but it's hard to track them progressively over time. These are your lower hanging fruits. You can affect changes to these ones faster. Um, like if you look at the data and you see that there is consistently a lower return of strokes in a certain length of a swim. So say you're doing a 200 meter swim and you notice that the third 50 is always slower than the rest of them. You can actually hone in on that third 50 at that point. You don't have to, you're not, you're not trying to change the entire performance. You're just trying to change the part that actually matters. Um, so that's something that, I mean, you, you can count strokes on your own, but it's easier to see it if, uh, if you see it over time. Then there's the metrics that are, are sort of the lesser known metrics that, that really help to um, make a bigger difference in terms of changing performance. And these would be your stroke index, your distance per stroke, your stroke rate, your turn times, push off strength and time underwater. So these are the things that it's really quite difficult to um, it's really quite difficult to get these ones on your own. You need a technology to collect these data points um, or you need to do a lot of calculations on the side if, if you can do that. Um, so it's these ones are the ones that are going to make a bigger impact, right? If you can see that your distance per stroke changes length to length, then you can sort of tighten that up get your stroke to be more efficient and spend less time wasting energy that you could reserve for bringing home the close of the race. Um, so helping your swimmers understand the importance and getting to know all of their numbers so that they can quickly identify when one of their numbers sort of changes, right? They'll be able to tell based on their numbers. Once they get to know their numbers, they'll be able to tell based on the numbers if they've had a bad swim or if they, um, if there's something that they're going to be able to, to make an impact on without even needing to come to you, they'll be able to say to themselves, okay, look, I noticed this. I don't necessarily need to go to coach with this. I can actually make this change on my own. Um, so then the key is to really understand individual strengths and weaknesses. And this is where the coach plays a huge role. So the swimmers coming to you and, and, and giving you all of the feedback that, that they have, that they've gleaned from the insights that they've been going over on their own time. Um, and it, this is the part where, where swimmer and coach have to come together and identify, are you a distance swimmer? Are you a sprint swimmer? Are you someone that has the endurance that's going to be able to handle uh, 25 plus strokes in a length, or are you someone that's got the strength that's going to be able to get the same pace out of doing 15 or 16 strokes a length? Um, really understanding how we're going to be able to perfect the performance for each of those individual swimmers is going to make a huge difference in impacting change for each of them. Um, so you can understand how their numbers are correlating to their performance. 
Uh, you can notice these changes in a number of ways that will show areas where you can focus on for testing new strategies. Um, and then you can look for consistent dips in certain laps of races or, can, or look for inconsistencies in shorter underwater times or longer terms or, or so on and so forth. So you, can, uh, so you can really make changes to those unique little tiny minutiae por portions of the race. It's a unique feature in that it gives you the ability to compare, it gives you and the swimmer the ability to compare to the pros. It also offers the swimmer, I mean, it, it's cool. They can see, hey, look at how close I am to uh, Caleb Dressel or to um, Chase here. Um, or the other component of it is they can see just how close they are in some of their metrics once they get into that higher performance swimming. Um, it's really cool to see, okay, so maybe I'm pretty far off chase in terms of my split times, but look, my distance per stroke is not too far off this guy. So there's a possibility that I can actually get there. So it gives them the motivation to keep going to get there. Um, so you can, they can compare themselves against the races that have been swam. Um, all of the races that we analyzed, like I don't know how many of you saw all of the FINA analysis that took place last week, um, but all of those races are available within the platform. So you can actually pick any one of those races and compare a, an athlete to those races. You as a coach also have the ability to compare your athletes against each other within your group, um, but the swimmers themselves within Triton Wear Insights have the ability to, to compare themselves to those pros and, and pit themselves against each other so that they can see where they need to improve. Um, and then we come to uh, optimizing the weak points. So this is where it really comes down to um, coming up with your strategy to improve. Um, so the key here is to develop a few different strategies. So typically we see um, shorter DPS, faster stroke counts or faster stroke rates and higher stroke counts being one strategy that's used or uh, a higher DPS, a longer stroke rate and a lower stroke count being a secondary strategy that's used. Um, and then there's many variations in between those things. So the key is to come up with a strategy that you and the swimmer think that are going to work for that swimmer together. Um, make sure that you come up with a few different versions of that strategy though, because just coming up with one, I, I, you're probably gonna have to iterate a few times before you get to where you actually need to be. Um, so make sure that you set the expectation with the swimmer that they're we're going to try this strategy. We're going to see if it works. And then we're going to try the next thing. And even if this one works really well, we're still going to try the next thing to see if we can get something to be better. And then we'll make combinations of those things. Um, so you want to incrementally change techniques to see if a theory is working. So, and, and you definitely need to be prepared to switch strategies if targets aren't being met faster than, than if they are being met. So then the next component is to make sure that we set realistic goals. So Rome obviously wasn't built in a day, nor is performance improvements going to come all at once um, or even as quickly as we want them to really. Um, so the idea is to find a balance between setting stretch goals and setting the bar too high. Um, if we can keep practice challenging but attainable, we'll be able to maintain motivation but we'll be able to, to see progress as we go as well. Uh, so the key is always to set short and long-term goals at the same time so that you have the quick wins while you're aiming towards the long-term term games. Um, and then I, I'm sure everyone's heard it, but the, the concept of SMART goals, right? So they're, they have to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. If you don't have all five of those components, um, then, then attaining your goals becomes significantly more difficult. Um, and finally, uh, testing strategies. So every athlete is a little bit different um, and, and no one, one strategy is going to work for every athlete. So it's incredibly important that we iterative, iteratively test your plans along the way so that we can see what works for athletes, swimming styles, what works for the 
physical strengths and, uh, and, and what plays to their weaknesses. Um, and, and of course, along this path, make sure that you let the, get, the data guide you. So data is only as valuable as the person interpreting it. If you try and tell the data um, what to think, the data will give you the answer that you're looking for. You really need to let the data guide your process. So that basically wraps up the eight tips. Um, so now I'm just going to quickly tell you a little bit about what Tritonware is, and then we'll move into the Q&A session. Um, so for those of you that aren't already familiar, Tritonware is a small device that um, goes that rests in the, the small pocket at the back of the swimmer's head. It attaches to their goggles, um, and then it collects, captures, and retains 12 metrics for all swimmers simultaneously by detecting the movement of the head as the swimmer is swimming. Um, our process, we validate our accuracy and reliability by analyzing the data against tens of thousands of videos recorded, video recorded sessions. Um, we optimize our algorithms with real world values, and we are currently more than four times more accurate than the best competitor. And, uh, you know, we're always getting better. Um, in terms of the mobile app, it will display the activity for all athletes wearing the units simultaneously. Uh, each athlete's information will update in real time throughout the workout. Um, and within the mobile app, you actually have the ability to, to compare uh, metrics against one another while you're, while you're there. So, so you can see multiple different screens. It's not just the information in front of you. You can actually dig right down into the data on deck with your athletes. Um, so it's going to look at general trends by viewing high level data grouped at the rep set or workout level, or it'll drill down to analyze everything in detail for the incremental adjustments. Uh, and then when you go on, on to the Tritonware Insights portion of it, um, you can overlay set data from different workouts to pinpoint an athlete's improvements. Um, and, and so these results are going to answer questions like, is speed increasing while I'm maintaining stroke count? Are my turn times getting faster? Is underwater times increasing? So this is really where your swimmers are going to spend most of their time trying to analyze that data and figure out what they can bring back to practice to make changes. Um, so the live app that we just saw is primarily a coach's tool, whereas this is primarily a swimmer's tool. Um, so just to quickly recap everything that we spoke about. Um, so the, the, the eight steps that you really want to do is, pre is start preparing right away. Check your data on, a reg on the regular. Get to know all of your numbers. Understand your strengths and weaknesses. Compare yourself to the pros. Set realistic targets and test your strategies. Uh, so those are basically all of the... That, that's the presentation. Um, so now we're going to move into a bit of a Q&A session. Um, so the first question that I have is, you mentioned looking for consistent changes in an athlete's metrics. We don't run test sets right now, but would that be beneficial to get good data for comparison? Or our workouts right now aren't always the same. So this is a great question. Um, you don't have to run similar workouts to, to get the information. You can, uh, you can pick and choose sets out of a workout. But if you, if you can set up a test set, that would be the same set that you would run on either a weekly or a monthly basis, um, then that's going to make it even easier for you to pick out the, uh, the anomalies or the areas that you could possibly improve. Um, so the next question is, when setting goals, is that something an athlete or coach should do on their own, or should they do it together? So this is another great question. Um, there's, there's two camps. One, there should be some goal setting should be done as, as a group, as an athlete and a coach together. There can obviously be some goals that the coach brings to the athlete that they suggest that the athletes uh, aim for. Uh, but in the end, it's the athlete that has to actually attain the goal. It's not the coach. So it is the athlete that has to agree to and be interested in, in the goals for sure. Um, next question, you mentioned setting goals. Are time-based goals, i.e. hitting a 110 in a race, the best type of goals for tracking with Triton Wear versus um, results-based goals? Um, so this is a good question. 
you can definitely, I would say that you can probably do both. Um, from a time-based goal perspective, obviously you can hit that kind of goal just with a stopwatch. Um, so a results-based goal is probably going to be more beneficial using a Tritonware software. Um, but, but again, because we're collecting all of the data, you can you can measure both. So if you wanted to have a combination of those types of, of question or of those types of goals, you absolutely could. Um, and the next question here, when you create a goal and strategy, is that something I should check the results after every practice or should I wait a week or two to let the changes take place? Um, you should get in the habit of checking the goals. Uh, you should get in the habit of checking the data after every practice, just so that you get very, very familiar with those numbers and you can see when those incremental changes start to take place. If you're only looking every week or two, or if the swimmer is only looking every week or two, they're not going to get quite as much out of it because they're going to have to go back and look at more and more data to get familiar because they won't have the familiarity with it. Um, so ideally, if you could be looking at, at the results after every practice or at least a few times a week, you're going to get that much more out of it. Um, next question is, when I give my athletes homework, what specifically should I get them to look at? I'm the only one with an iPad, so how does how do they see the data? Um, so this is a great question. So the Triton More Live app that you use on the iPad at the pool, that is only available for coaches. The swimmers are actually going to log into a web app application, a web portal, Triton Wear Insights. Um, and that can be utilized on a tablet, a mobile device, or a computer. Um, so they can access it from anywhere that they have an internet connection. So Triton Wear Live on, on deck doesn't require an internet connection to work. It will sync up once you get it connected to an internet connection. Insights needs an internet connection, but doesn't require an iPad to work. Um, so the next question, uh, I have a young team with early competitive swimmers. So far, we've mostly just been focused on basic good technique in their training, rather than spending too much time on a specific metric. When you do suggest, when do you suggest we start incorporating these metrics? Is there a level at which they become more valuable or should I start with them now? So this is a great question. Um, the sweet spot for Triton wear would be those swimmers that have a developed enough technique that you're starting to try and hone in on specific components of it. So you can recognize butterfly as butterfly. Their arms are making it out of the water. They aren't being disqualified in a race. Um, the, the real sweet spot for trade and wear is, is when you have a swimmer that's just on the cusp of moving up to the next qualification level. So if you have already qualified for your regional type, um, type group and you're looking to qualify for your state or your provincial type group, um, that's, that's the sweet spot, right? Where you're going to make a, a, an abundant amount of changes. Um, typically the swimmers that are, I mean, your high performance swimmers are going to perform incredibly well across the board and you're going to be able to make those minute changes that are going to get them those milliseconds that they need to qualify for the next level or to make the gold or to make the record. Um, but those swimmers that are just trying to get from regional to states or from states to national, those are the swimmers that, um, that need to make more significant changes in their performance to get to their goals. So those are the ones that it's gonna work really, really well with. Um, and then the last question that I have here is, why aren't you measuring heart rate and will you in the future? Um, we are working on the next gen of our product that we are, which we're working on heart rate. Um, I do not have any sort of a date in terms of when that will be available, but we, we do recognize that the biometrics component would be a, a huge benefit to this as well. Um, so we're not measuring it at the moment because you can't measure heart rate off the back of somebody's head. We'll have to put uh, 
some different uh, features in place to, to get that to be able to be measured. Um, but it is something that we are working towards for a future release of our product. Okay, we've got a couple more questions here. Um, the first one would be, what's the pricing for this tech per swimmer? Um, so that can be, there's, there's a few different tiers that we can go to. Um, so if you are just beginning in, we have a, a, a beginner or a bronze package that can start as little as um, $20 a month. Um, that includes the profile as well as the, uh, the device itself. Um, and then that ranges up from that beginner package to our most advanced package, which hits in at about $40 a month. Um, so it really depends on what you're trying to, um, it really depends what you're trying to accomplish and what level of swimmer you're trying to work with which package is gonna make the most sense for you. Okay, that looks like it in terms of questions. So I want to thank everyone for taking the time to come out today. Don't forget to follow us on our social channels so that you get the, uh, the tips and, and tactics that we're putting out there on a regular basis. Uh, make sure that you're signed up for our emails so that you get notifications when we put up new blog posts or when we have new information that you can find useful. Um, and also stay tuned for our uh, video series that's going to be coming out uh, a little bit later this summer, maybe into the fall, um, where we're going to start putting a lot more focus on the education and how to use Tritonware as part of your practice.